Okay, this video is about um, improper integrals and when you're trying to decide whether the integral is convergent or divergent, not necessarily worried about when it converges, what does it converge to? You just want to answer the convergent versus divergent question and there are two major theorems that you use. One is called the direct comparison theorem and one is called the limit comparison theorem. The focus of this video is the limit comparison theorem. But let me remind you what the direct comparison theorem says. Um, when you have two functions and one function is um, greater than the other, on some interval from A to infinity, then in order to say something about the lower function, you're gonna need to know that the area underneath the larger function is convergent, meaning like equal to a constant. And so if the area under F is equal to seven, then the area under G, which has to be less, must also be convergent. We don't know what it, it converges to, but we just know that it is convergent, must be. And then the other way around, if the area under G is divergent, meaning you know, it goes to infinity, then the area under F must also diverge because it's more. Okay, so that's the direct comparison test, but it is contingent upon that inequality. And so this video looks at what happens when that inequality goes the wrong way. So we have um, a function where we have uh, x to the fourth plus three x, it's underneath a radical and in the denominator of a fraction, the numerator is just an x and we're inter uh, interested in integrating from two to infinity. The three x is a term that is insignificant. We gotta drop off something that's insignificant as x gets large. Now, three times a, you know, a very large number is significant, but when um, put up against the x to the fourth, then it's not as significant. So we can drop off the 3x. Now by dropping off the 3x, what we've done is created a new fraction. That new fraction is, let me change the color here. That new fraction is x over the square root of x to the fourth. And when trying to decide about the inequality, when you have all other things held constant, and more in your denominator, then your fraction is smaller. You're dividing by more. And so, and then the simplification of this is gonna be x on top of x squared, which is just one over x. So this fraction that we have for the original is smaller than one over x. Okay. But we know that when we integrate one over x, from two to infinity, that for sure is a divergent integral. The area, so, so um, playing a role of f is this one over x, it's the larger guy, playing a role of g is our given function, and when we integrate, for sure, it's gonna go to, an, uh, it's gonna diverge. And so, we get the natural log of b, but b goes to infinity, and so, we'll end up for sure with a, divergent integral. So our larger fraction, our larger function has an area that diverges. This, uh, the area under F is infinite. That doesn't say anything about the area under G. It could be infinite, it can be a, a finite number, it doesn't say anything about that. The inequality is going the wrong way. And so, we can't use a direct comparison test. We needed that, that larger function to have a convergent, um, the area to be convergent, so then we can say that the lower function is also convergent. But we can recover. Um, the the trade-in is that we can do something else, and that something else is called the limit comparison theorem. The limit comparison theorem is going to be you going out and getting the same function by dropping off what's insignificant. And you don't have to worry about who's bigger or who's smaller. Um, just take the original guy and call it F, take the one you go out and get, call it G, and basically divide. And it doesn't even matter the order that you divide, F over G or G over F, so you can call them whatever you want. Go get them, divide them. Take the limit as X goes to infinity. If that limit is a constant, what it basically means, a finite constant, what it basically means is that 
the functions behave alike. Ultimately, as x gets large, it says that pretty much f of x is just some constant l times g of x. So whatever behavior you know g of x has, f of x has that same behavior pretty much. They're, they're only differing by a constant. And so they will behave alike. The integral on g of x will do, um, you, which you'll be able to go, you know, for sure get. Make sure when you go out and get the other function, make sure you know what it does. So for us, we're naming the other function g of x. Make sure you know what the integral on it does. Okay, that needs to be known. Okay, and then you can then conclude that the other guy does the same thing. They either both converge or they both diverge. So it's called the limit comparison theorem. There are, if you look it up, there are two other levels to this. Um, there's a part B and a part C, but it, for, uh, for the purpose of now, we're just gonna focus on this part A when the limit is a, um, a finite constant. Um, but if you wanna look it up, there are two other parts to the limit comparison theorem. But for now, let's keep going with uh, just this one part. Okay, so let's go to this um, example where we couldn't use the direct comparison theorem, go out and get the same function, and now we don't care about inequality, and so we, um, it turns out to be that we have our one over X and we have our original guy. This is our original, and this is our guy we went out and got. And what we can do is divide these two guys in the limit comparison theorem. Sorry, it says test here, it should say theorem. The limit comparison test is for um, a series. Um, the limit comparison theorem is for integrals. And so we divide them, but you gotta be good at taking limits to do this though. Um, when you divide them, you're gonna multiply by the reciprocal so that X on top is gonna become an X squared. Now, there's many ways you can do this. Um, as long as you go into infinity and you have X squared, it's gonna be positive. So I like this technique of um, recasting the numerator to have a radical on it with the goal in mind of combining the numerator and denominator. And so I'm gonna recast X squared. Just give it a new name. The new name to X squared so that I can incorporate a radical would be the radical of x to the fourth. Because you know, it's just x to the fourth raised to the half, and so I get x to the two. It's the same thing, I didn't do anything drastic to it, but this new name for it allows me the ability to have a, a, a square root in the numerator, a square root in the denominator, I can put them together underneath one square root. And the property of limits will allow me to bring the limit inside the square root and later take the square root afterwards. It's only when you have a polynomial divided by another polynomial can you use some of the uh, shortcuts to finding limits at infinity. When a degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then your limit will be the ratio of those coefficients on those leading terms. And so, this guy has a coefficient of one in the numerator. This guy has a coefficient of one in the denominator. And the three X is insignificant. We don't have to show why. We can just state this and then respond back with the answer is the square root of one or one. So we did the limit comparison theorem, divided our two functions. And what we got is that when we divide them, we get one. What that, what that means is that they're pretty much the same function. You're not gonna be able to indistinguish, you know, they're gonna be indistinguishable as X goes to infinity. Ultimately, it means to us that F of X pretty much is equal to G of X as, as X goes to infinity. That X cubed, that's, I mean, that three X that's underneath there comes basically negligible. So therefore, um, our integral that we went out and got diverged. Remember we showed that. And so this other integral also diverges. They behave alike. Okay, so that's one example of using the limit comparison theorem. And if you wanted to, not even, you know, if you're having trouble with the inequality and who's bigger, who's smaller, and making it go the right way, you might want to use this as your go to. You got to be really good at taking limits, though, to make this your go to. Okay, and uh, let's see, one more example. Um, we have e to the x minus x. And so um, we want to know does it converge or diverge, the integral from one to infinity, uh, one over the root of that? Okay, the minus x is negligible. E to the million is so much more than a million that the million is basically can be written off. We can forget about it. And so we then um, drop off the minus x. Now, just for a second, let me show you why the direct comparison theorem doesn't work. Um, so this guy, every, everything else held constant. What we have here is a smaller 
denominator. And in turn, that makes you a larger fraction. Everything else held constant. And so, therefore, um, the, uh, the fraction is larger in the context of, um, in, the, in the context of our picture, we have the larger function and we're gonna show that that integral converges and that's backwards because um, it doesn't say anything. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay, so the small, okay, so the original guy is larger. Okay, this is the original guy who's larger and our, um, the one we went out and got, the new guy um, is smaller. So you saying that that integral converges is saying nothing about the original guy who's bigger. Uh, let's take a quick look as to why it converges. Um, let me. So, um, so one over root e to the x is one over x to the uh, one over e to the x, and that's raised to the half. And then you multiply those exponents, and um, that's one over e to the x over two. And when you go to integrate it, you're going to need the negative. Um, exponent version of that so go to e to the negative x over 2 and then whenever you integrate e to the kx you get 1 over k e to the kx as long as k is some constant and therefore um, the, the value of k for us is a half negative a half I'm sorry and so on um, the reciprocal of that is a negative 2 so what we get here is a negative 2 the integral is negative 2 e to the negative um, x over 2. But to know what's going on at infinity, it's important to put the um, negative exponents in the denominator. So that's what we've done here. And remember, you got to plug in b. You can't plug in infinity. You have to do this limit here. It's an improper integral. We put a b in, we put a 1 in, and what happens there is that we get um, e to the b over 2, who's going to be um, going and getting very large, a constant over a number that's getting very, over a function that's getting very large, um, with f of x going to infinity, that's gonna always go to zero. Okay, and so this guy goes to zero, giving us a convergent, um, giving us a convergent integral. So our integral converges, now the question is, well wait, that's the wrong thing because just because this integral equals to um, two over root e that doesn't say anything about the, the larger one. It could be a constant. It could be infinite. So basically all that was to say that the, the um, direct comparison theorem doesn't work. And now we're on to the limit comparison theorem, which says, oh, you know, get them the same way. Divide them, though, and multiply by the reciprocal and combine them into one square root. Bring the limit inside and do the limit of the top limit of the bottom, um, I mean, the limit of this fraction, basically they're the same. We can't use the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, but we can um, find this uh, highest degree or kind of like the highest, um, the term that means the most in the denominator and multiply by its reciprocal, um, the term that dominates, I mean. And what that does for you, that creates uh, fractions um, on the other guys that you can quickly say go to zero. Well, not quickly, but um, after you multiply by the reciprocal of that, you end up with, um, uh, x over e to the x, and all the other guys are ones, uh, that goes to zero. You might have to do a L'Hopital rule as x goes to infinity, officially it's infinity over infinity with air quote, and then take the derivative of the numerator, get a one, take the derivative of the denominator, and it doesn't change, e to the x, and one over e to the x goes to zero. So therefore, once again, like the other one, example, the, the limit as x goes to infinity of f over g, um, is, is equal to one, and you read that basically as f of x pretty much is equal to g of x as x goes to infinity. And so then that means they behave alike. And you found that uh, the g of x integral converges, so your f of x integral also converges. Your original guy also converges, and you're using the limit comparison theorem.